Uh, greetings, everyone. Greetings, fellow grade tens. It's Mr. Shajo here. Welcome to Back to Basics. What we are doing is we are looking at Euclidean geometry, and I want us to attempt it using a past paper, which was our November 22 paper, right? I think it's from the Gauteng province, right? Now, let's see. Firstly, in this question, they say a parallelogram, P, uh, Q, uh, R, and S, right? So basically, that is going to be this parallelogram here. Right, and what is it that we already know about a parallelogram? I think we know a few things from a parallelogram. We know that, uh, you know what? We know that the opposite sides, are what opposite sides are equal, right? Uh, we also know that the opposite sides are what the opposite sides are parallel. We also know that the opposite interior angles are what are equal, right? Opposite angles are equal. So that's the first, you know, few things that we know about this. And then now they say PW, PW bisect QPS, QPS, which means basically what they mean. As soon as they say bisect, which means they want us to tell, they want to tell us that our P1, it is going to be close to our P2 because that's what we know about bisect, right? And now they are also saying that PW, PW is going to be parallel to what? to st and then pt uh, is also parallel to ws now what is it that you're going to do they want you to prove that x plus y is equals to 90 degrees how are we going to go about improving that now let's start here right <laughs> now so we are going to start by doing this already what is it that we already know we know that our p1 is going to be close to what our angle P2. What is going to be close to the reason both of them are going to be close to X. Why? This one is already given. Remember, they told us that the line, what PW, bisects those two angles, right? So, which makes this particular angle to be close to X. Now, what else now do we know? I want you to take note of this, right? Uh, now, you are also going to note that now, our angle S1, and therefore, Right, our angle S one, our angle S one is also going to be equals to what uh, is going to be equals to our angle S two. That one is already given also because they told us that S W also bisects that particular angle, right? So which means your angle S one is going to be equals to your angle S two. They are both equals to uh, uh equals to Y rather, right? This is given, isn't it? That from bisection, which means this particular. A angle here is equal to this particular angle. Now, from there, what else then are we going to do? I want us to look at this. I want us to look at this, right? Now, uh, if we can look at this, right? If, let's say, we draw our U here. Remember, uh, let's say we want to draw our U here, right? Let's say we draw our U here. Remember this, we are given that this is a parallelogram, right? So, we can draw our U here. And when we draw our U here, can you see that all these angles, they form what we call co-interior angles, right? So, which means now, what is it that you can do? Which means you can start by saying, look, our angle X, remember here it's X, and remember here it's Y also, right? So, which means now, our angle P1 plus angle P2 uh, plus what? Plus angle S1 plus angle what? Uh, S2 is going to be close to 180 degrees because these form what we call core interior angle, right? These are going to be core interior angles. And why are these angles going to be core interior, right? Uh, these are going to be core interior angles because already we know that from a parallelogram, our PS, right? This is going to be our PS. Uh, is going to be parallel to our QR. Remember this we are given, since we are given that this is a parallelogram, right? So which means here we are having X, uh, right? Plus X plus Y plus Y is equal to 180 degrees. Now from here, you are going to have 2X plus 2Y is equal to 180 degrees. After here, you are going to take out 2 as a common factor, right? So you can take out 2 as a common factor. You are left with 2X and also Y, which is equal to 180 degrees. You can start dividing by 2 this side and divide by 2 this side, which means your X plus Y is going to be equal to 90 degrees. Okay. So basically, that's how you are going to do that first question.
Okay. Now let's look at our 8.2 now. Right? We are making up our space now to look at our 8.2. What is it that we know about 8.2, right? Now in 8.2, they say prove that a PWST, PWST, let's get another color. PWST is basically this P W uh s this is s and this is t right so which means if let's say i have to blow uh to join this basically it's this uh orange uh shape right yes this orange shape that's what they want us to prove so what is it that you are going to do to prove that now i want you to take note of something here right now uh, if we can start here if we want to we can start by calculating what is going to be our angle uh, w1 remember from rectangle what is it that we know we know that the corner angles they form a 90 degree right so let's find out what is going to be our angle w1 isn't it so right so which means now le let's see we are going to say look our angle p2 plus our angle s1 plus our angle w1 they are going to give us 180 degrees why because these are some of what some of angles in a triangle can you see i am mentioning this particular triangle right this triangle here how to get now what is it that you are going to note which means already we know that p uh p2 and also s2 this is x plus y uh, plus W1 is equals to 90 degrees, or rather is equals to 180 degrees. Look at me, right? Now, what is it that we know? Already we know that uh, what X plus Y is equals to 90 degrees because we've proven here, right? So, which means in a space where you're having X plus Y, you can replace with what? With 90 degrees. So, what is it that you're going to do? So, you're going to say this is going to be 90 degrees plus W1 uh, plus or rather is equals to 180 degrees out again then now from here which means your w1 is going to be equals to 180 degrees subtract 90 degrees which is w1 is going to be equals to 90 degrees are we fine right so basically that's what we are required to do how to get uh so that's what basically we are going to uh also do right? our pws right our p W, uh, this is P W S T, right? P W S T, uh, is equal to what is a parallelogram? Is a parallelogram? Why is it, uh, going to be a parallelogram? Already, we are given that the opposite sides are what are parallel, so it's a parallelogram, right? So, which means now, why, why are we saying that is a parallelogram? Because uh, both pair of opposite sides are equal, right? Uh, both pair. Both pair are of what? Of opposite sides are equal. Uh, of opposite sides are what? Are uh, equal. Now, which means then now, since there's the pair of opposite sides are parallel and the corner angle, it is equal to 90 degree, then you can just conclude that, therefore, your PWST is going to be called what? Is a rectangle. Oh, to get. So basically, that's what you are required to do in this particular question. We are saying in question nine, what is it that we are already given? Now they say uh, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram with A, D parallel to B, C and also B, A parallel to C, D. What is it that you are going to do here? Now, uh, what is it that they say? Use the above. Uh, or rather the diagram above to prove the theorem that states that now the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So basically they want us to prove that the opposite sides of a palm are equal. Now, how do we prove that? We are going to prove that by looking at what we call congruence. As soon as they want you to prove sides, right? The only thing that you can conclude with, you can just prove congruence because you know that uh, if the two triangles are congruent, then therefore all the sides and angles are going to be equal, right? So, which means now we are going to focus uh, in triangle, what? We are going to focus in triangle ABD, in triangle ABD, and also triangle, what? We are also focused in triangle also uh, BDC, right? BDC. Oh, to care. So basically, which means we are focusing on these two triangles. Let me just note the other one to be the red one so that you can see, right? 
So we are focusing on the red triangle and also the what? The orange triangle, right? Now, why is it that you are already going to do now from here? Uh, already we are, we are, we can see that from here, your what? Your BD is going to be close to your BD, right? Can you see that this is going to be your common side? The side is common in both of the triangles, right? And then now, what is it that you want to, I want you to do? Now, if you can form a Z starting from here, come here then you come here right can you see that this angle is going to be alternating with that right which means your angle d1 is going to be close to your angle b2 why these are going to be alternating angles right why are these alternating because your ad is parallel to b c can you see that remember you cannot mention alternating angles without mentioning the sides that are parallel and then now what else then are you going to have uh, the same is true now. We can also look at that uh, now. Uh, since we've also uh, mentioned that, we can also look at that. Look, uh, if we can uh, look at our B2, right? So we already know that this B2 is equal to that. And what, what is the last thing that we can just look at now, right? Now, uh, so the last thing that we can also look at, you can look at our angle what here. Now, if you look at this Z starting from here to here, right? Can you see that this angle here is going to also alternate with this one, right? So you can also say, look, uh, now your angle D1, or rather your angle, uh, your angle B1 here is going to be equal to what your angle b1 it is going to be equal to your angle d2 right your angle d2 in this particular triangle they are also what alternating angles because your ad is parallel to bc all together so basically that's going to be what uh we are required to do as far as this particular question is concerned then now from here right uh, you can just now conclude that look our triangle a uh, our triangle A, B, D, all right? Our triangle A, B, D, triangle A, B, D is going to be congruent, right? Triangle A, B, D is going to be congruent to triangle B, uh, D, C, right? Triangle B, D, and also C. And then now, what is it that you can use now to prove these two things? We're going to say this, we used what? Uh, we used side angle side, right? Or rather, we, we used a uh, angle side angle, right? That's what we use to prove this particular uh, thing. Now, from here, what is it that you already know? Since we have proven that these two angles are congruent, right? Remember from congruency, right? From congruency, we are saying all the angles are equal. Therefore, all the sides are going to be equal, right? So, which means now you can then now conclude that, what? You can then now conclude that you what? Ah, uh, you can conclude that your AD, your AD is equal to your BC, and also your what they said prove that the opposite sides of parallelogram are equal, and also your AB is equal to what is equal to your DC. Why are you saying that? Because of what? Because of congruent triangles. That's the reason why we are saying that. Oh, okay. Hopefully, this makes sense to you now. Ten. They say prove that triangle RDB is an isosceles triangle, right? So they want us to prove that, you know, two angles on these particular sides are going to be what? Are going to be equal or two sides are going to be equal. Now, how can we go about proving that? Let's start here. Uh, now, they say the diagram D and E are midpoint uh, of side AB, right? And what? And also BC of triangle, what? ABC. Point P. Uh, is on BC such that your PA, such that your PA is parallel to BP, out here, or to PP. Now, what is it that you can note here? So, which means I want you to start by noting that as soon as they've mentioned that this is a midpoint, so which means you can start by saying, look, your DE is going to be parallel to your AC. Can you see that this particular side is going to be parallel to this side? I would look at 
that's from what that's going to be from midpoint theorem remember that's going to be your midpoint theorem right and now from here what else then now can we note from here that our angle what that our angle d2 now as soon as we've noted that i want you to note that your angle d2 here is going to be called to your a look at these angles they form what they form what we call corresponding angles if you are moving like this and you form an F like this, right? Can you see that they form what we call the corresponding angles, right? So which means your angle D2 is going to be equal to your angle A because of what? These are going to be corresponding angles. Why are they corresponding? Already we've mentioned that D is parallel to AC from midpoint theorem. Now, what else then now can we note is that look, if I can look at my uh, B1, right? Uh, my B1, my angle B1 is going to be equal to your angle A, right? My angle B1 is going to be equal to your angle A. What is going to be the reason behind that, right? Now, this is going to be angles opposite equal sides. Look, let me just, uh, you know, remove this so that you can see what I'm mentioning here, right? So, I am saying here, uh, now, from here... This is going to be what? Uh, as soon as they've mentioned that this is a midpoint, what is it that you're going to do? Already they gave us that this PA and also what? And also PB are equal. So which means now this bigger triangle here forms an isosceles triangle. So which means my angle A is going to be equal to my B1. My angle B1 is still going to be equal to my angle A. These are going to be angles uh, opposite equal sides. Right. And now, as soon as I mention that, so therefore I can then conclude that, look, my angle D2 is equal to angle B. Can you see that now? If I conclude that this angle here is equal to this angle here, then therefore I've proven that this is going to be what? Uh, this is going to be uh, an isosceles triangle, right? Because which means I mean that my DR is going to be equal to my BR. And what is going to be the reason there? Uh, this is side. Uh, this is going to be side opposite uh, equal angles, right? Equal angles. That's going to be the reason why we are saying that. Oh, to get. So then I can then conclude that, look, my triangle RDB is an isosceles triangle. Is an isosceles triangle. Oh, to get. Hopefully this makes sense to you now. And thank you very much.